training has to do with FOIAs and some other stuff that's going to be happening in Arizona this year. So. What you have, much? Okay. Uh, I want to get about seventy or seventy-five dollars out of the cemetery and get some wet and forget and work on the veterans' stones up there. Okay, so vet, veteran circle at the cemetery. Uh, I figured I'd hit the old one first. Is it cleaning? Yes. Okay, headstone cleaning. Motion to approve the agenda as amended. Troy has made the motion. Second. Seconded by Mark. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> public hearing. What time is it, Troy? 7 01. Oh, good. 7 01 p.m. Public hearing on Ranger Steel Erectors Incorporated. And, uh, Troy, you want to take a look? Sure. Um, so we have a public hearing tonight, which has been noticed and published regarding the IFT application, industrial facilities tax for Iranian steel. Excuse me. Um, so this was originally completed as, this was originally approved as a speculative IFT. We did that a year ago, June, June 7th of last year. Okay. So um, the process with that is, when a building is built as a speculative IFT, we approve a resolution. It doesn't go to the state yet, but it holds the right that if someone occupies the building that would qualify for an IFT, it can then go on the IFT roll. And when the property goes on an IFT roll, the improvements, so not the land, but the improvements of the building goes on the roll at half millage, with the exception of the state education tax. That stays in full. So anyway, uh, we approved that speculative application a year ago, such that if anyone occupied it, there is now, they have purchased the building and they would now qualify for an IFT and they have applied. So this is, uh, we need to open it up for public comments and then uh, if you want to let them okay. you know, go over what they've done and everything. So I'm going to start with Justin. Can you start with me? Okay. Hi everybody. Good to see you all. Uh, Justin Horvath, Shiawassee Economic Development Partnership. I'll make sure the camera knows who I am here. Uh, this is actually, when Troy was talking, I realized this. I think that this is actually the first time in my career we ever actually did a speculative IFT anywhere in Shiawassee County. Uh, and obviously, uh, Spartan Fence built the building uh, with the hope that they would eventually find a great company uh, that would move in there, and I think we're very lucky uh, to have the business we have. And I'll let you guys introduce yourself. Uh, but I've gotten to know them over the past, uh, you know, a few weeks and months. Uh, I think it's exactly the kind of business that fits in Perry Township. Um, you know, smaller industrial company working all over the place, central location, uh, great workforce, family-owned, family-run. Uh, you know, that's kind of the, the demographic of, of our industrial areas here in, in Perry Township. Um, and so um, I'm personally very excited to, you know, support them uh, and, and them not only being here tonight and their, their tax abatement request, which once again, being a, you know, family-run business, the dollars they save, I mean, they're still paying taxes, but as Troy said, at half the rate, they're going to reinvest that in the building, in their people, in, in the community. Um, so um, I'm certainly supportive of this, and I'm really excited about their future growth here and engagement in the community. Uh, working with other businesses, working on construction projects. Uh, uh, we've just added a great uh, construction company that can work on projects throughout Shiawassee County, too. So I'm in full support, and I'll, uh, I'll let them take the floor. <laughs> uh, Joshua, start. 
Or do you want a Lindsay to start? <laughs> either either one. Yeah, so like like Justin said, uh, we're a second generation business now. Like we uh, took over a family business from my my parents, and uh, you know we we knew we needed to, to do some different things and grow. And you know this was we we've been hunting for a while looking for a building and a place and this was really the place that fit us the best and um, we grew up we both grew up in Fallerville so not far from here and so like we've been familiar with Perry you know our whole life basically and so like it was just kind of fit in here anyways we have employees that live you know within 10-15 minutes of our building and then we're still looking like we've we we moved in February I think it was February, yeah. February, March, yeah. early March we moved in. We've already, you know, started some small fabrication stuff out of our shop. We've been doing some work in the shop and we just want to keep expanding on that. And so we're just, you know, looking for whatever help we can get in, you know, any way we can possible. But yeah, I, I mean, in the future, I think we'll actually have a small fabrication team, you know, in-house that will be working there all the time building stuff and sending it out wherever we go in the state, you know. Yeah. This is the second in. location for you? No. no this no. is the only location? This is, yeah, this is our only location. It, it previously was at our personal property, so okay. this is our first commercial property, but we are looking forward to, like, <laughs> making making a real go out of this thing. When I went in there, she, uh, Lindsay be on the right, I think, was it was it Jennifer or Jessica? Jackie. 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 Yeah. Yep. Okay, Jackie was, was on the left. Well, very easy to get on with yeah. talk to. Very, uh, answer my questions. And, yep. and so, uh, any questions I had, it was like that. And uh, she, she said, I just talked to Justin about an hour ago. I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Small yeah. towns, yeah. 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 Small yeah, it's it's just Thank it's been nice just just for the whole small town feel of everything. It, it's just been nice, like you know, we looked at a lot of different places and it just it just didn't fit or work out like it did here. So Great. that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. And Mark, I don't know if maybe you're thinking of the other new industrial company, Lifetime. Oh, I just no, okay. I just didn't know you know because second generation, I didn't know if they had it. No, oh, um, my, no, my father just kept everything pretty small and we kept it at home when I was a kid, but um, and he's, it's started. just gotten to the point where like we do too much stuff now. We just can't, you just can't run out of your house. Like we have to, we have to do like we should and have a real facility and that's what we have here now, so. You gotta be able to go home sometime. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like, that's the place we need to be. It really is. What were you going to say, Lindsay? Uh, Butch. His dad focused primarily on the field work, um, and this building is going to allow us to kind of expand into fabrication and facilitate our field crew to do even more. Yeah. So it's going to add. Yeah. I know you guys gave us a tour. It's beautiful, absolutely yeah. fantastic. It is. Yeah. It's, it's a great building it for really us. Is. It, it really is. And that might be good to talk about because I don't know if they all know. So like the work you do out on the field in steel erection, can you talk about that? What those jobs look like? I mean, we're we're building buildings. I mean, ever, anywhere and everywhere. I mean, we have probably half a dozen jobs at MSU's campus right now. We're working down in Dearborn at the big uh, Ford job, the Ford Hub. And I mean, like in the past, like we did, I did a bunch of additions and renovations on the Perry schools, all the classroom wings and all the big canopies and stuff, all the entrances. I did that stuff like 15 years ago. And I mean, we've done a bunch of schools in the area. We've done Ovid LC. We're doing schoolwork at Poama Westphalia this summer. Like, we're always kind of around, you know, Owasso School, whatever it is. We just did some work for Owasso Schools right up the road. So, like, I mean, we're always kind of around. It's just, but we want to get our shop going more so we can expand even a little further. So. Any other public comments? Once? Twice? Three times. <laughs> so we need a motion on this? Yeah, so just to, just to quickly go over again. So this is just, the abatement is just on the improvements. So this is the new building that was built, designed as an industrial building. So there's no, you know, there's no loss of taxes that 
weren't there. There was no taxes there before, so there's no loss on the real on the land or anything. Um, also, we have criteria, you know, based on how long we give abatements and everything. The maximum amount by law is 12 years. We give them in two year increments. So every two years it comes up for a renewal, and that way we can just make sure everyone's doing what they said they were going to do. Because <laughs> we've had that not happen before. So, and that's so, I mean, as long as everything, you know, the investment's still the same, the employment's still the same, you know. I would guess in this project, you'll probably qualify like an eight to ten year total, somewhere in that range. But we just give them two years chunks. So we're, we're pretty young. We still got quite a few years left. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to retire. Sure. You yeah. could outgrow it, though. <laughs> All right. So yeah, um, I will make a motion that we adopt the resolution. What number is it, Kelly? Three. 3 2024 to approve the uh, IFT exemption application. I'll second. But you'll second it? Okay, roll call vote, Kelly, please. Uh, Mark Fraser? Yes. Uh, Francis Griffith? Yes. Kelly Schmidt? Yes. Fred Fermily? Yes. Mark Bolt? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And there's a, there's a couple documents we'll have to have you sign. Thank you. Okay. And this takes just so we're this takes effect next January. So this this come up. So yeah, the the tax bills you get this year for July and December, they're pre IFT, and then next January you'll get the IFT. Okay. Any other Provided the state tax commission has to approve it too, but they always approve them and we did. So any other questions or comments? Seven eleven. Okay. We want to make a motion that we uh, adjourn the public hearing. Motion. Mark. Second. Butch. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. May 1st minutes. Gosh, this year's half gone. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion been made by uh, Troy. Second by Butch. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Okay. Public comments. So we're going to use this time to talk, have the people that want to uh, talk uh, to the public and on the camera. Uh, time to do that. Uh, we'll have Scott go first. Uh, Scott uh, was with our MTA last night. We had a little, uh, uh, well, it was a Chi Town Park, so we had hot dogs and we had hamburgers. And there was about 25 people there. The sheriff, Ron, well, former sheriff, Ron Gold, was there. He said, Representative Brian was there, and um, Mr. Bogdan Boggs uh, was there, and uh, I got to meet you for the first time, I think. I think so. Maybe, I think so. And Scott and I had a good conversation. He knew some people I knew, and it was, it was nice. So I said, well, this is public comment time, time to address the public, uh, and uh, you're running and uh, for uh, crossing attorneys. So Correct. Let's go ahead, and uh, if you want to stand up, Phil, sure, give us a little... Thanks for having me here, Mark. Um, it's a pleasure to serve the people of uh, Shiawassee County and Perry. A little bit about myself, my background. Um, I grew up just across the border in Hazlitt, kind of in Williamstown Town Township, where that little slice of Perry moves over. And um, a lot of time spent in Perry um, with Hazlitt being sports teams, and we, we came over here all the time. And then I moved to Langsburg about 17 years ago, with my wife Kelly and my two kids. and. Again, we were back in Perry, great, great community. Um, I was appointed by Judge Stewart in 2020 um, and then was elected in 2020 as well. Um, we've been having a, a lot of jury trials lately. Um, I, I continue to support those jury trials. One of my chief opponents here, um, we battled it out yesterday and I think justice prevails. He, he gave a constitutional defense, but um, we put away a bad guy yesterday for sure. Um, he uh, will be doing a minimum of 25 years in prison. And over the last six months, we've had at least five or six trials, and at least three or four people will be do doing at least a minimum of 25 uh, years in prison for their criminal sexual conduct. And I'm committed to keep on defending them. They're not easy cases. They're not easy cases. Um, Doug Corwin did a great job yesterday of making the jury think. They, they deliberated for a while. They had a lot of questions. I could tell they were thinking. Um, but at the end of the day, I think we, we had justice served. 
and I commit to you that I will continue to do that, and I would like you to um, support me in August. There's a, a, a primary. My opponent's here, Robert. I acknowledge him. Um, and I'd like to continue to serve the, the, the people of this county. It's been a privilege and honor, and I would like to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate the comments. Any questions or any comments? Okay. All right. Thank you. Next, I want to have uh, Doug Corwin. Do closer C -O -R to C-O-R. We have W-I-N. Yeah. 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 I like that. Yes. Okay. I'm Doug Corwin. Uh, currently, I'm the public defender for Shiawassee County. I uh, created the Board of Commissioners almost six years ago, hired me to start a brand new government office. And as Scott said, we give each other a run for the money. Uh, I am running for probate judge. Uh, and the reason being is somebody's got to step up and bring integrity, uh, honesty, and compassion into the court. Uh, we've all read the news articles about uh, the current probate judge, and I got asked to run. I'm also an ordained minister. I have a church in Corona. I plan on still having a church as my judge. Um, I work with the veterans. I'm the commander of the Sons of the American Legion, Post 57, out of Owasso. Uh, also with the American Legion Riders, ride a Harley motorcycle as well. Just recently got my pilot license as well. So a lot of activities I do out there, very uh, family-oriented for the public. Um, and some of the goals I have to do as a judge is, Judge Stewart implemented the sobriety courts or controlled substance, I'm going to call mine a controlled substance court. But I want to bring that into the juvenile delinquent and the family court side of probate court. Uh, you have the two most vulnerable classes of people that are handled by probate, which are elderly and the juveniles. And so we need a judge that's got some integrity and honest and actually cares about people. And that my background shows that and I plan on doing that. And one of the goals I have is IMC, they call it a, a school to prison pipeline. We see families. I've been here the last 26 years as a defense attorney since 1998, sworn in by Judge Straco. And I am seeing, I've represented the grandparents, the parents, the kids, and it's a cycle that needs to break. And I was just talking to Judge Stewart the other day about some of my plans, and he's going, yes, front-loading, that's what we got to do. And I've not heard that term, but that means instead of spending, when you've got a major problem, hit it when it's a little problem and get it corrected right away. Part of my goal is to work with uh, local employment agencies in the community to get people jobs and get pride in themselves and, and work together. So that's another aspect of the, the family court idea that, that I've got. And so I'm going to mirror uh, what Judge Stewart has in his courts. It's highly successful and I think it'll be great for our kids. I have been a defense attorney in Chiawassee County since 98 and I just see this pattern and, and we got to stop it. We got to get the kids while they're young and turn it around. I have a good relationship with the sheriff, prosecutor's office, uh, <coughs> uh, the county. Uh, so How about Tom Avery? Um, yeah, Tom. <laughs> so, uh, Tom's a good guy. Uh -huh. Attorney as well. You know, he, I'll second that. So, um, and you know, good relationship with all the board commissioners. Yes, yes. And I got a lot of support behind me. And, and so I just got to hit the streets. It's hard to be an incumbent. And um, so you are the first township meeting I'm attending. <laughs> so, oh, you only got, I got 15 more. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a call today from my campaign. You need to be in Perry at 7 o'clock. So, oh, okay. oh, uh, so I'm here. I want to introduce myself. I did bring in my pamphlets, but I can get them before you leave and, and hand them out. So any questions on anything? Um, I've got radical ideas, and, and we need to have our courts work for the people, not the courts work for themselves. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank Appreciate you. It. Nice to meet you. Nice surprise. You know. Okay. Anyone else? Would like to speak right now? Okay. Okay. Um, do you want to say anything? Well, I. Um, oh, from the campaign, matter of, from the campaign well, area. Yeah. Uh, oh, I was going to. I'll give you my monthly report, and but I am going to talk about the fact that I'm running for re-election, but I'll. Well, since we're talking about okay. uh, politics, I'll do that right now. Might as well. Uh, yeah, I have, uh, 
having spent a couple of years in the office in Corona, I decided to run again, and I'm on the ballot this time. Uh, and uh, I uh, think that uh, it's important that we, uh, on the county level, of course, this township is pretty self-sufficient, and uh, I know you take care of a lot of things, but because we're dependent on the county on the zoning in the zoning area, you do the planning, but the uh, township uh, or the uh, county does the zoning. And uh, one of the issues I ran on two years ago was the fact that I didn't feel that the uh, county was really stepping up to its full legal responsibility in the area, area zoning. So that was one of the issues. And as uh, uh, some of you know, we did have rather a major issue come out of uh, the town, Perry Township involving a uh, uh, a gravel pit, and I think we got it resolved uh, correctly for the township. Uh, it was taken to court, and uh, it was uh, the position that I advocated before the county and that the uh, county took was upheld by the court. And I think that's uh, 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 a minute when I ran. I'm not pushing for any particulars, this or that, but that we follow the law and that when we zone, we zone according to the law and not people's personal uh, uh, desires or uh, whatever. Tommy, uh, you've been very helpful uh, for our township the last couple of years while you have been uh, in that well, office. So. Um, because of our, the township's relationship with the county, I feel that's an important thing for me to do. But it's not my personal feelings. It's we're going to follow the law. So the first thing I have to just pick these up today, my door hangers for going house to house, which uh, I will start doing, maintain a rule of law. And that's correct. I am uh, an attorney. Uh, attorney uh, by profession, but I think it's important. Uh, it doesn't mean anything if we don't follow the law. And uh, so, uh, now I do understand, uh, while uh, I had uh, have an opponent on the uh, uh, ballot, it's my understanding through my personal conversation with John Plowman that he is uh, opting not to pursue uh, the uh, uh, he, he was the incumbent uh, uh, two years ago. He's not pursuing that. It's my understanding from a personal conversation with him that he's uh, there's apparently a position open on the road commission that uh, he's interested in. So uh, while he's on the ballot, uh, it's my understanding he's not pursuing uh, uh, the position. So, uh, uh, and, uh, so um, and then I have my brief usual report uh, to make to the uh, township board. But uh, things have been reasonably, uh, perhaps I should say that, not, not just reasonably, remarkably quiet on the county level. Um, but I am uh, chairing at this time a uh, subcommittee of the county board of commissioners dealing with the, uh, the, the fact that we're going to be in a position to disperse some opioid monies uh, dealing with, and it's an area that ties in with what uh, Mr. Corwin is talking about as far as the courts and the drug uh, usage. And uh, so we're going to have some money. It's not a great deal of money, but from the perspective of the Board of Commissioners, I can tell you that just about any amount of money that's coming in, this kind of new money that we are asking the uh, local taxpayers to come up with, is important. And uh, so we are going to, uh, the, the issue that we have before us is how, how are these monies, and it, it's going to vary over the next 10 years, anywhere from uh, the first couple of years, about there's six hundred thousand dollars. The succeeding years, it's about uh, two hundred thousand dollars a year. Now, frankly, from the county perspective, that is not a huge amount of money, but it's important money 
that can be used um, uh, uh, within the scope of dealing with the op opioid drug problems that are serious and can be, uh, the opioid drugs can be uh, fatal to people that abuse them and so on. So we're going to be interested in uh, 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 the dispersing of those monies to the county. My position was from the very beginning that we've got two primary departments of the county that are involved here. Number one is the health department. It's been my position that we turn to the experts in the health department to assist the county board of commissioners making a de determination how we're going to use these monies. And the other one is, and, and I think the prosecutor and uh, uh, the, ju the judge would know about uh, is the courts have a role in dealing with uh, defendants or, or uh, persons charged with crimes who do have drug problems and so on. So my view is those are the two main uh, departments in uh, county government and so we need to hear them and see what their recommendations are. Final decision rests with the Board of Commissioners, but in my view we need to listen to the people who deal with it day in and day out to decide how to use that money, those monies. It's not just uh, that we're going to throw money around willy-nilly. Uh, so that's uh, something that uh, uh, on July 9th, as a matter of fact, we're going at our uh, commission meeting, we're going to have a presentation by those agencies uh, to the uh, commission on how to use those monies. Uh, one other thing that's been going on since uh, Justin Horvath is here, there has been a good deal of activity and he's generally involved in, with the land bank uh, monies and uh, uh, I, I know there was a fairly successful usage of these monies in um, Durand recently with a company, small company, but it would start doing uh, uh, manufacturing, uh, I think it has to do with tractor, antique tractor parts, which is interesting in itself, I guess. And, uh, and then there were some projects in the city of Wausau, but these uh, monies uh, are available, and I think we have some potential areas in uh, uh, Perry Township that might be, I know there's a lot of hoops you have to jump through, but uh, why not too far from where I live <laughs> sure. in Perry Township that uh, might be uh, might be useful to uh, get out of that. We actually tried to bring that in on that grant program. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, so I understand. Anyway, and um, so that's uh, basically uh, a combination of my election and the, my existing position, my report to the Shawn, uh Township Board. Any questions? Okay, any questions? Thanks, Tom. Questions? Thanks, Tom. Okay, Tom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, anyone else want to comment? We'll have another session too later, but you want to also? May I? You may. What's okay. your name? Robert Hennig-Joseph. Ro Robert? Hennig-Joseph. Okay, I'm going to say Robert. <laughs> no, that's okay. Good to be back with the board. I was here before. Uh, candidate for Shiawas County Prosecutor and Mr. Oh. Kerner is in the office or in the, the building this evening. But my platform, if you recall, is restoring justice to Shiawasi, and that's based on three principles no more sweetheart plea deals, uh, restoring voices to victims, and protecting our children. While well, certainly I don't think my opponent would disagree, we need to protect children and we need to give voices to victims. It's the leadership and how that's being accomplished that I take uh, displeasure with. And in the current administration, you know, you're charged with being a leader of that department and being a good steward of the public monies, and yet the turnover rate is, in the last uh, cycle, is, by my count, 29 individuals have come and gone from that office, including five chief assistants. That's just not being a good steward of the people's money, and that's something I intend to change through recruitment and retention and training and, and keeping the people there. They're currently staffed at 1.5 assistant prosecuting attorneys, which 
makes it very hard to conduct the business of the people. And while I applaud holding people accountable for their actions, it's certainly unsustainable at its current rate. And that's why I'm running for the position I am. Okay, Robert. Okay. Yes, you were here a couple months ago. I was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Hi. I'm not politically involved at all. Okay. Hi. Um, Corey McIntosh. Okay. Uh, I just recently purchased a home in the Forest Green subdivision. Okay, Forest Green. And I would like to know how to change an ordin ordinance. How do I go about getting an what ordinance, is the ordinance? changed? How to change uh, ordinance? Two of them the livestock ordinance and the fire pit ordinance. Well, the, some of the, the fire pit ordinance. You probably need to go and talk to the fire chief. I've done that. And, and they said that due to the board, they cannot give us a fire permit. See, the, um, the ordinances, like the animals and the, and the fire pit ordinance, at this current time, are administered by the county. Oh, we the, don't have the burn, the burn one is ours. There, there's the burn. We have a burn. Okay. Yeah, that, I mean, that prohibits all open burning in forest green. Okay. I, I wasn't aware of that one. But the, but the animals... The animal one, that's a county issue. But we, we don't do our own enforcement on that stuff. We, we have the county do it for us. Okay. So we so, don't have any local people that do that. It's all done in Corona. Okay, so I need to talk to people in Karana on that. Pete uh, on, the, on the animal issue. What kind of animal? Uh, just the, the chickens and the ducks. Like, I was curious on why people can't have ducks, but there's chickens and roosters around my house. I don't mind them. I would like to eventually have some. But neighbors were told they had to get rid of their ducks, but oh. neighbors right next to them have chickens and roosters. In the same area? It's yeah, same the, same right area. next door to each other. So I'm confused on why ducks are not allowed, but chickens are. The, the burning thing, you say that we have a special ordinance just for forest green. No, no, it's our burn, per, burning ordinance. <coughs> yeah, in it, forest green, there's no open burning in forest green. So you can't have a campfire. It's restricted because of hollow pine trees. Correct. I'm right, I, under, I understand that. A fire I'm trying guy going in there, it'd be a bad, bad deal. Yeah, well, I'm trying to figure out how I can get that amended or changed to have it. Yes. I understand why it's there. I do. And I totally agree with that. But there's houses that have um, indoor fireplaces that could easily get out of hand too. So if we get the fire department to come out address the area and give us a burn permit, I don't understand why we can't have one. Like, my yard is very open. I don't have a lot of pine trees. I have a water source within 20 feet of my pit. Let me back up. I purchased the house not knowing that this was an ordinance. I put my pit in, and then a neighbor told me, FYI, it's a no-burn area, but five of my neighbors all have pits. So I want to know how I can legally be able to burn. A small campfire with family and friends. If you go to Corona and it's the Surbeck building. Mark, they don't handle the burn. <laughs> oh, no, oh, oh that's that's the animal that's the animal one. The animals. Okay, I'll, okay, I'll come up there. Okay. Yeah, the burn permit that's ours. So um, Well, I mean that's been in place since Forest Creek was there for years. Right, so would I like have to do a petition of all the neighbors and see no, no, I mean, well, I mean, you could, but I mean, I mean, there's no, like, referendum process or anything for it. Okay, so there's no way of changing it. Well, I mean, the township board could change it, but I mean, without, I mean, we would certainly go on whatever the advice the fire department has. Okay. Not, not just because someone wants to have a burn. I right. mean, if an open fire got going in Forest Green without any... Without any fire hydrants anywhere close, the I, entire subdivision would be gone. I agree, and I totally understand that. But we can talk to the fire department and see their thoughts. But I mean that—that that is in the ordinance because that is what they recommended at the time. Okay, I had sent emails to Kelly when I first purchased the um, property, and she said that if I called the fire department and got a burn permit or had them come out and look for a burn permit, 
that I might be able to have a fire. I called the fire department and they said because of the board, they are not allowed to give burn permits at all, period, no discussion to our subdivision. Right, so Forest okay, Green Act what... has a, in the ordinance for us, no open burn in Forest Green. Okay, so I need to talk to the fire department to see about getting that changed with you guys. Well, the decision will rest with us, but I mean, I, I at least my personal opinion, unless the fire department said it would be a good idea, I wouldn't change it. But, I mean, we, we can look at it, but, I mean, there, is, there are reasons why it is that way. And that, when that was put in place, that subdivision since then has become much, much more mature and much more, some of it's quite frankly overgrown in there. Also agreed. Okay. Thank you, though. Appreciate it. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Well, public comment uh, number one, we'll close with. Now we go to our reports, and I can, if you want to leave, you can, or if you want to stay, you can, whatever. But uh, sheriff's report. All right, 99 calls for service last month. Of those, 24 of them were traffic stops. Okay. Mark, cease. Well, a few quick things. Brian Fifeley retired as of the 1st of June. Oh, yeah. A lot of people know Brian because he's been around here a long time. Um, he had a lot of years in the make the British summer years. And uh, it was just time to be able to spend more time on the mountain up north. Uh, we've been struggling a little bit with health insurance costs. It was a huge increase from the current provider. Mm -hmm. Our struggle becomes even more difficult because of the union contract on the EMS people that there's specifics outlined in the contract that we have to deal with and we have to get them to make changes, you know, so that, that creates issues. Um, and to that end, we still occasionally have vacancies on the ambulances because the big departments are still recruiting actively for paramedics and EMTs and they they steal people from us by virtue of money. So anybody that knows anybody that really wants to come to a good area in a, in a job that isn't as intensive as the ones in the cities, you know, that, that are already a paramedic or an EMT or want to get trained in that way, please send them our way. And to that end, the union contract is up at the end of the year, so they're starting to do negotiations on that. There's going to be a safety day at Station 1 in downtown Perry on June 8th. It is kind of geared toward the kids and fire safety and stuff, so if anybody knows anybody that wants to come and visit and uh, so forth. That's pretty much the high points. Okay. Okay. Anything else to add? Anything else? Good. <laughs> All right. Uh, DDA, of course, they meet in July. Uh, third, uh, what is it, the uh, 18th or 19th? Third that was, Wednesday? That was looking right now. Is I third Wednesday. Third Wednesday of the 17th. It's what? 17th. 17th, okay. And uh, again, we're out of uh, uh, Rep. Uh, Swakin's office, again, we did uh, get the uh, uh, there's top 15 got approved. We we're number, number actually the top seven. We were in the top seven of uh, 15 that are going to go to Washington D.C. 1.2 million for the uh, water line down Lansing Road, down Mentor Drive, tie back into the high school so we get rid of that dirty water at the high school. Everybody's drinking a lot of water there because uh, it's a dead end at night, and you can imagine how dirty that is. So anyway. Uh, uh, we'll know between October and March of 2025 if the appropriation gets approved, but uh, uh, you, you, just, you just never know. Uh, things, things happen, but uh, this is something that the, uh, our township took on. We have the money with the DDA uh, and the uh, township up here, about 400000 If they give us one point two, that would be $1.6 million that should run the pipe. Uh, put some isolation valves until they can get a water... Uh, another booster water pump or whatever they need, uh, but we can get, get started on it. So we're working on that. So we're hoping that goes. Uh, zoning, uh, I, last month, we don't have any new ones this month. Uh, county Commission report, you give that basically, right? Library. 
Martin? Hold on real quick. Come to zoning. We zoning. should just mention that now we have a problem flare back oh. up with the posts on Thorn Apple Drive. Yes. That, <laughs> Monday. The, that the, you know, the county took them to, I don't know what we call it, not small claims court, but, you know, the Why hearing in front of the, my, main, my the magistrate, magistrate hearing and whose rule that they were not a fence, they were just fence posts and therefore it didn't violate the ordinance. I was there. But now they have stuck a fence up which would technically violate it, but the Monday. county will have to rebring its Monday, claim. the neighbors were calling me. It started Monday at 10.30, they finished about 8 o'clock, and I got a nice night picture with all the fence, all the fence complete. And now, I, and he actually may be putting new posts all the way up to the uh, end of Beer Grove, which will be a violation also. But the good news is, the picnic was great. I got to talk to Dr. Bobbs about it, and he's well aware of the situation, and so, We'll work with. Uh, and so we'll see if the see if zoning the department will do anything nature, and do it properly takes this course, time. But it does appear that there might be uh, some uh, help uh, in the wings. So, okay. okay. That's what you want me to talk about. Or you want to talk about. Well, I just think we should be noted. Yeah. Library. Okay. Uh, she told me there was some important things. They're going to uh, put a second drop box on the Perry branch for books. Oh at the back entrance because it's more accessible with a wheelchair and stuff. I wanted to remind everybody that there was uh, a millage vote for the library of millage this August. And uh, that they're very actively working and that's what these brochures were about, the uh, summer reading program and then the, the one about Byron days, but they're working with Byron a lot because that grant that came to Byron, a big portion of that was the library to get it out of the school. And uh, they, they've actually gotten word that uh, that construction on that building may start in late summer. So. Okay. Okay. Thanks, All right. I see you on train. No, meeting. All right. Uh, Mark, back to you, SEDP. Well, um, I will say that uh, Land Bank and the Brown Field Authority did not meet this month. We didn't have any business. And as far as SEDP, I was doing it by phone. So if I can con our president and uh, <laughs> what? give a report about the last <laughs> SEDP meeting. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I'll be very brief. Um, and actually, I'll focus on Perry Township. Um, actually, the, the library. Um, that uh, Mark is referring to, that was actually facilitated by our grant writer that we have on our team, Lion Bear Ventures. So I think most everybody knows this, but we have a partnership with Lion Bear um, that's been able to help support local communities and applying for dollars. So they worked with Burns Township and the Byron Library to get this. It's a $500,000 grant from the State Department of Labor and something, something. So. Um, so that's moving ahead. We also, this is important for all of the uh, board to know, we also just got another grant to pay for the grant writer from our local family foundation, the Cook Family Foundation. So if there's a, a I guess a wish list uh, that Perry Township or um, even nonprofits can qualify for in the area, please let us know. That service of grant research and writing uh, is available. Uh, Land Bank, just to touch on that, uh, Mark's right, Tom is right. Uh, we're really moving good on that. Uh, we're actually doing a demo kickoff tomorrow uh, for the Welcome In in Owasso, Caledonia Township, uh, the one by Walmart, the one across from uh, Young's. Uh, that money is tearing that down. We're tearing down another building in downtown Duran. As Tom said, we've torn down a building, another building in Duran. We've torn down buildings in Lennon. Um, we are working on a demo on a house in Morris. Uh, I don't know the address. I know there's some legal issues. We've talked about that um, as far as ownership. Uh, we've got other things going in Bancroft, Owasso was mentioned. We're all over the county, which is good. Everybody's getting a fair shot. There is more money coming, though, from Lansing. They're telling us that not everyone around Michigan has used their money. So this can be for blight elimination. Could be for um, abandoned, has to be abandoned, abandoned residential, commercial, industrial structures. It could be for demolition, stabilization, rehabilitation, or some environmental cleanup. 
So, uh, but the key is it either has to be publicly owned or there has to be a court order, you know, something mandating a demo, um, or what I would call a willing private sector partner, a private owner. Uh, one of those things has to, has to happen. So I think we actually sent the board a letter. Uh, I got a letter. You got a letter, yeah. Just thinking about projects um, that, that you might have. So Julie sent the letter, I think. Yeah, yeah, she's fine. Yeah. Julie's hard. So, so please think about that. That's for everybody listening and watching too. If you have any blighted buildings or properties, let us know. Uh, Lifetime Metals looks like they're finishing up on their building. I mean, that's a beautiful facility. Um, and so, um, at some point, want to do a, a welcome open house for them. We'd love to do a welcome open house for you guys as well. Um, you know, as far as uh, welcoming you to the community, um, I think it's Justin's photo op. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's good for the community. Just, just something to know. Yeah. <laughs> just do everything we can to make sure that house in Morris doesn't fall through the cracks. It's complicated. There's it's, a very, bank. it's very complicated. Yeah. I'm afraid it's going to fall through the cracks. So. There's a bank that has a note on it. There's yep. a bank. It's going up for taxes. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've talked to Julie. I've talked okay. to Brent. I've talked to the village. It's not really... Our problem, but the village have done some yeah. work. They're very frustrated where yeah. things are at, so I just make sure to fall through the cracks. That's yeah. about the only thing we talked about at the last meeting. The land bank. That's a lot, yeah. Was that Morris House? Yeah. It's yeah. one of the major things. Yeah. 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 But well, it, it's bringing in over a million dollars in Shiawassee County. It's good. So, I mean, had we not done this with, you know, our staff, Mark, I remember talking to Mark, Mark, we want you on this board. You'd be a great member of the board. And I was trying to say it, it'll be a good time. And hopefully it's been a good benefit for you. We've got a lot of work done. You know, thank you, Tom Emery and the Board of Commissioners and the staff. They've been great to work with on it. I mean, these are monies we wouldn't have without this work. So thanks to all the, the board, the commissioners, uh, the treasurer. It's been a great team. Out. I think the chairman of the board will be there with you tomorrow. He was at the picnic class. So he said he'd be there. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Greg. Greg. Greg Greg, Greg, Greg will be there. Board. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm, I'm pulling for you everywhere I go. You see that? You know? Okay. Anyway, there you go. One more thing here. We got the uh, planning commission board. Okay. We've been, the major thing we've been working on is, is the proposed zoning ordinance if we need to use it. Um, some of the things that have cropped up and, and we've gotten some information on, one of them was roads that somebody proposes putting in something and it doesn't really take a lot of traffic, why can't a subdivision, if it's not in a certain area, why can't it be a dirt road instead of a paved road with curbs and gutters and stuff, which puts that complex out of the doing of affordable housing in many cases, which has been a, which has been a focus of SEDP and and the land bank and the SEDP in particular for about four years, and now the state's jumping on that bandwagon. Mm -hmm. So, so that was one thing that the road commission is actually in favor of. Okay. And and they would find a way to if with our cooperation as a board. So that'll be coming down the pike. The road commission is okay with creating new roads that are not paved. Yes. Yes. If we're if we're because that to, has not been their policy. Yeah, the no, they understand that certain roads it isn't necessary to be paved to turn them over to the to the county for you know maintenance. So they don't. They, these wouldn't be turned to the county. These would be private roads. No, because we're in the ordinance. We're run, we're not allowing private roads anymore. <laughs> That's it. So the county would be allowing a public gravel road. Mm -hmm. And. In addition to that, we've also, as we're working through this, we've kind of put the kibosh on Maldi House driveways. We feel that a house needs a driveway, and to have, I mean, you and, mean not allowed shared driveways. Shared driveways, shared, because yeah. that down in the future, you know, the exception is a farm because that's that's under a whole different set of rules. But well, it's complicated because you have the shared the driveway rules. issue, but then you it's have the. Couple. Then if you don't do that, then it has to be a private road, and I mean, it's, it's, it's complicated. Yep. And uh, the other thing that we've actually been discussing since the last Planning Commission meeting is this whole thing over in Green Township with the battery plant over on the west side of the state. Oh, oh. And a uh, court ruled last
last week or the week before that Goshen Township had to adhere to the agreement that the recall board had agreed to with them and that there is no way to get back out of that. So our discussion has been can we do something in this proposed zoning ordinance to prevent us from getting stuck into that corner down the road. Contracts are contracts. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not saying about the contract, but you know, the foreign ownership issue with, with you know, large facilities like that. So that's uh, it's something we're just looking at and discussing. So that's pretty much been the thrust of the Planning Commission lately. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Troy, financial report and pay the bills. All right, you got your bills list in front of you. Um, kind of the major ones we had, we had the bills for the tree trimming and forest green. 11,000, um, yeah. 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 Well, we have our annual MTA dues. Had a lot of lawn mowing this <coughs> week. Yeah. Other than that, um, not a, this isn't a month where we get a lot of income in. Mm -hmm. Any? Mm -hmm. Right, we spend more in the summer than we take. <laughs> Any questions on the bills? No, pay them. Mark says pay the bills. Mark. 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 We'll call Kelly. Pay the bills. Mark Fulton. Okay. Yes. Mark Frazier. Yes. Francis Griffith. Kelly Schmidt. Yes. Yes. Any correspondence, Kelly? Yes. Okay. So uh, we received from the chamber, Michigan or Shiawassee County Chamber of Commerce, there was a um, a 100% sub, subsidized LED four-foot lights um, that we could get. So I submitted the paperwork, and we have 70 fixtures here with we got four bulbs. And <coughs> they brought them in on a pallet. Yeah, right and in there. Have them. We just have to get them up in there. Good job. Good so job. That, that was one of the things. That was good, Kelly. We, free. Yep, they were free. Um, we got a notice that... Accurus, Accure, how does this say? sure which is used to be Spalding Insurance. Oh, Spalding. Yeah, they're moving to Howell. We also received an anonymous letter from a resident asking what the Perry Township officials are doing about some junk and debris. So that was passed along to Pete's office. Um, we also received a notice that the City of Perry is drafting a mas uh, their master plan. And that's all I have. Good job. Anything else? Okay. All right. Uh, that's that. Uh, public comments again. Announcements. Any announcements? I'm glad you're all here still. Anyway, <laughs> unfinished business none. New business tree and stuff removal at the cemetery. Help. So Mike um, is concerned about three trees out there. <clears throat> I think I, I gave you some pictures. They're leaning and they're very old and he's wanting to take them down before they create a problem with headstones. So there's... I think the one on the last page, if you look at the bottom, I think down at the bottom, it's starting to deteriorate. And good wind would probably knock it over. So he's wanting to cut three trees, and then there's a large stump that he's, he said it's pretty rotten. He ought to be able to get it out with the excavator. Um, he is estimating that it'll be $1,200 to do that. And Motion to approve the extra charge of twelve hundred dollars to remove the three trees. Second. Troy made a motion. Mark second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, roll call. Roll call. Yes. Roll call. <laughs> uh, Kelly Schmidt. Yes. Troy Parmalee. Yes. Mark Folk. Yes. Mark Frazier. Yes. Francis Griffith. Yes. I also asked him to um, get with some uh, stump grinding people and find out how much it was. We have a lot of stumps out there yeah. in the old section. We were putting flags out for the cemetery or for the veterans, and I noticed so many of them. We've taken trees down, and what's left are all of these nasty stumps. So I asked him to just get a couple bids on a stump grinder that he thought could get in there and take care of those. And he hasn't gotten back with me on that yet, but. What about his uh, tractor? Did he get a repair? Uh, I have not heard that. I need to call him today, and I did. Okay. So I had a little Which issue. tractor is that? A lawnmower. 
the one to one leader. What do we use the log for? He uses it for the trailer. Yeah, like doing the foundation. Foundation. Foundations. He does it for cremations. So where did he take it to get it repaired? He didn't take it anywhere. I had Mark Lock go over there and help made him over there. Mark Lock. His okay. dad's right next door here. Uh, so, we'll okay. see. We'll see we'll what see. happens. If, if there's a problem, call me. I think, think it was a bad okay. And I've got shots that you can take it to. I thought it was a bad guy. Okay. Uh, okay. One game pass. Okay. Oh, okay. We thought you got mad at us and left. <laughs> no, coffee. Oh, coffee. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. we've got a restroom right here. I mean, you're. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Oh, the cottonwood. Oh, the cottonwood. Oh, I know it. I know it. Coughing during the trial all day. Anything funny. else, Troy? Oh, what time is it? Oh, well, we still got two items, Mark. Oh, wait. MTA. <laughs> election. Election. So yeah. there's an election prep uh, course that um, it talks about election workers, required election notices, um, retention records, freedom of information. It's $100 as, uh, for an early bird. And I think that it would be a good idea if I went to that. Okay. So I'll make a motion that you do. Second. Second by Mark. Right. Roll call vote, I guess. Troy Parmalee. Yes. Mark Folks. Yes. Mark Frazier. Yes. Francis Griffith. Yes. Kelly Schmidt. Yes. And Butch Veterans Headstones. Yep. Okay. Get uh, the cost between $70 $75 to get that stuff. Now, I used it on two stones that's in our family. I mean, where you couldn't even hardly read the name or anything on it. Right now, they're just like brand new, just like it just put out there. That's the stuff that's how, around it. How many, how many can one gallon or so do? Well, I figured I like to do the south side. That's where most of the old, you know, World War II and World yeah, yeah. I veterans stones are at. Um, <coughs> if we get a few nice days, I figure I can do it with, at the most, two gallons. Two gallons. And that would be about $75? Somewhere right now, between okay. 70 and 75 I'd say approve up to $100. Okay, Kelly made a motion. Troy? Oh, Mark, 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 second it. Okay. All in favor? Roll no. call. Vote, Kelly. The only, the only thing that I'm kind of worried about now, like I said, I experimented with the stuff on my on my own family, but uh, I don't think there's that many people around in World War II or World War One left out there for you know in case they we'll try and see. have a complaint against about using oh, it. I don't know. We've used it. It's part of, part of our job to maintain it. So. Okay. All in favor? No. Need a roll call vote. I'm going to get that one. Mark Folks. Yes. Mark Frazier. Yes. Frank Strippa. Yes. Kelly Schmidt. Yes. Frank Frippa. Yes. Okay. What time is it? Motion to adjourn. Public. You got one more public comment? One more public comment? Oh, session. Anybody want to say anything? Okay. What's on your mind? What he said. Mark. Thank you all. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs>